and at UIC. I will serve as moderator for today's talk, The Burden of Culture, Racism and Cooperation in Brazil, featuring our guest speaker, Professor Mojana Vargas. Here's the rundown of today's schedule. So first, I will provide some background about the series. Second, I will introduce our speaker. Next, she will give her talk. And last, we will have open Q&A where comments in the chat will be acknowledged. You can raise your hand so that you can dialogue with our guests and then we will close for the afternoon. So just some quick background about this series. With support from the Programming Committee in Latin American and Latino Studies, Black Studies has hosted an ongoing speaker series on Blackness in Latin America for spring 2022. This interdisciplinary series has featured five scholars with expertise across Latin America, including Brazil, Colombia, and Cuba. Each event has provided an opportunity for participants to explore the historical and contemporary narratives about Black communities in Latin America. For today, today's speaker is Professora Mojana Vargas. She is a PhD candidate on African Studies at the University Institute in Lisbon in Portugal. She is an assistant professor at the Federal University of Paraíba and coordinates the project Ethnic Racial Dimensions in International Relations Teaching. And her prime research topic is Africa in Brazilian International Relations, which develops theoretically and methodologically the implementation of the topic, Education of Ethnic Racial Relations in International Relations, relations Courses. So today, she will guide us through the talk, The Burden of Culture, Racism and Cooperation in Brazil. Thank you so much, Professor Vargas. We look forward to your talk. Well, uh, thank you, Professor Harrington. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with you today. Uh, it's a pleasure for me. And, and I must confess that I'm, that I'm a little nervous. Uh, while preparing this presentation, uh, I realized that I haven't spoken in another language since 2000, uh, 2019. Uh, so I feel a little bit rusty. Uh, so uh, I ask you for pages uh, to listen to a presentation that I'm going to read for you. Um, about the topic, uh, the burden of culture. That was uh, an article that I wrote a few years ago during my, my PhD course. Uh, and sincerely, uh, I, never, uh, I never hoped that someone would uh, actually read this work because uh, I sent it to an editor in India and I never, I never was, I never realized that it was really published. So Jaira found it, and she asked me to to talk about uh, something about it uh, with you today. And after after we started to to talk about this this presentation, uh, a few a few things uh, a very. Uh, uh, some some very harsh situations in Brazil happen, and so I change a little bit uh, the course of this presentation, uh, and I decided to talk uh, about something a little bit different uh, because African migrants in Brazil have a very particular uh, uh, experiences, uh, and I decided to to present to talk with you about this experience here uh, today. So uh, I want to talk to you about, I want to share with you uh, some reflections uh, on the immigration of Africans in contemporary Brazil. Uh, and this, this is about, uh, this I am about to, to present here. Uh, so uh, I, I want to start uh, thanking uh, Professor Harrington for inviting me here today uh, to this class uh, with her students. Uh, I've known, we've, we've known each other for a few years, I think now more than, more than a decade, I believe. 
and I'm a huge admirer of her work as a researcher. Uh, her research on the political role of domestic workers in Salvador was very striking for me, uh, who, because I was personally touched by uh, the recent passage of legislation that equated uh, domestic workers with other workers in, in Brazil. Uh, although at that time I had already started my career as an, uh, a university professor, I was thrilled with that charge personally treated with that charge for having worked as a, a, a domestic worker in my, uh, in my teenager uh, without any labor rights and receiving less than the minimum wage at the time. Uh, just in, the, in the beginning of, of, uh, of her article, Jaira used, uh, used quotes, uh, a, a phrase that says, that the, the, pass, the passage of this legislation was a kind of a second abolition for black women uh, uh, in Brazil. Uh, and I made this link because housework has been the occupation of different generations of black women in Brazil since the, uh, the colonial period. Uh, it is a form of underemployment for black women. Uh, and so was the work of the young, uh, the young Moise Mugeni Kabagambi, uh, hired on a day-to-day -day basis at a kiosk in Rio de Janeiro and brutally beaten, beaten to death for claiming late paydays. Uh, Moise and his family emigrated to Brazil from the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2000, to, uh, 2020, hoping to achieve a more prosperous, prosperous and safer life far from the armed conflicts that affect Congo. Unfortunately, they found here the racial violence that is historically rooted in our slaveholding past and that transforms black bodies into individuals who are crushed daily, uh, coaching the words of Achille Mbembe. Moise's case is the most recent of a long list of situations of violence suffered by black immigrants in Brazil. And I hear, and when I say black immigrants, I include Haitians, uh, Venezuelans, Venezuelans, and Africans from, from different parts of the continent who are received in the country under different legal status. Moise was among uh, the 1050, uh, uh, 1050 Congolese refugees admitted by the Brazilian government until 2021, a number well below the number of Haitians uh, around, that are around 6,006, uh, sorry, I al always have problems with, with these numbers, uh, but more than 6,000, Afri uh, Haitian, Haitian refugees in Brazil admitted until 2020. In fact, it is not even the most recent case. Moise's case is not the most recent. Just a few days later, his, his murder, another black young immigrant was shot to death for delaying the rent payment of the house where he lived with his wife and son in Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais. Uh, if you search in Brazilian uh, newspaper, you can find a lot of uh, a lot of cases about uh, talking about uh, Angolan, Cabo Verdean, Congolese, um, Nigerian migrants, students, or refugees uh, involved in in situation on, on violent situations. Uh, I found I found six uh, different cases uh, from 2000, 2019 and 2000, uh, 2011 uh, in different parts of Brazil. But uh, we can we can we know that there are more cases non uh, uh, non non registered cases of uh, violence against African. African migrants. Well, in addition to those to those to those migrants requiring requiring recognition of the the refugee status, 
most African immigrants received in the country between 2000 and 2019 were students. Uh, 552 young Congolese and another uh, 7,400 young men and women from all over that continent, according to data from the Brazilian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, despite their legal status, what these young people have in common, in common is the daily experience of racism and, vi and violence produced in a society that sees black bodies as uncomfortable, unwanted, and expendable, sitting again in Bambi. Examples of non-humanity since, and I quote, the perverse history of dealing with enslaved Africans makes their descendants and descendants and African immigrants objects of discrimination and racism, end of the coaching. In addition to Brazil being the last country, last country to abandon the Atlantic slave trade in the Western world, it is a nation that champions social inequities in which, despite the legislation inhibiting any form of discrimination, the black population is the main victimized and blame it for the legal system. In addition to have less access to symbolic goods, education, material goods and employment, which is reflected in the population of African immigrants. Uh, the neglect of recent African immigration re reflects the rejection that Africans have received since the beginning of the country's Republican period. The year after the proclamation of the Republic in 1989, President Deodoro da Fonseca prohibited the entry of African and Asian immigrants through decree number 528 of June 28. However, already in 1992, just three years later, the legislation was changed facilita facilitating Asian immigration. At the same time, the Brazilian government continued to campaigns to encourage European immigration started during the Second Empire, uh, aiming to strengthening the white element on our social formation and creating the utopia of Brazil as a country forged by the assimilation of migratory currents from all over the world. In this way, the descendants of enslaved Africans were left to, to incorporate into the sphere of activities of lesser economic and social prestige marked by subalternity, expansiveness, and exoticism. In the case of Europeans, Integration took place through the industrialization and modernization of Brazil, associating, associating them with the idea of progress. African immigrants in Brazil suffer similar problems to, to Black Brazilians, marginalization, discrimination, and racism. However, Africans are susceptible to double discrimination. On the one hand, because they are Black, and the other, on the other, because they are Africans. In this case, coming from a marginalized continent. In this sense, even in the case of immigration under study, uh, in which the immigrant has a certain status, the African countries to be, uh, continues to be seen from a colonizing and racist perspective in contemporary Brazil. In the same perspective, Neuza Guzmão, demonstrates that the African case involves acceptance and reception as a foreigner, and on the other hand, denial due to his belonging to the black race. Added to this is the fact that the African is seen uh, from a general category of belonging, Africa, a place marked by marginalization and derogatory views. Despite the specificities among African immigrants, African immigration is characterized by conflicts and crises that equal Africans. When they, do not surf, uh, when they do not suffer racism, the African is segregated, seen as a passive sufferer 
sufferer, worthy of pity, due to the origin of a precarious continent and with precarious working conditions. It is therefore noted that this feeling of pity disfavors interculturality, as pointed by Brignol and Costa, as African immigrants are seen as exotic and subaltern. Jorge Valla considers that this manifestation is configured as racism through positive feelings and uh, uh, aiming to place the black in the position of the dominated, that is, a poor little one incapable of great civilizational progress. It can be said, therefore, that African immigration refer, refer us to four aspects. One, the general history, history of black people. Two, the image of the African in general. Three, the foreigner. And four, the social problems of the 21st century, that is the humanitarian crisis, um, always linked to the African continent. Again, for Guzmão, despite the historical and cultural processes that united the two places, Brazil and Africa, the insertion of the African in, Bra African in Brazil is not due to the, bond, to the bond of the brotherhood, but through aversion, exclusion, marginalization, and racism. In turn, for Malard, unlike, unlike the spread discourse of Brazilian hospitality to all types of immigrants, the non-reception of certain citizens says a lot about the way a given society is characterized and the way it deals with tolerance in the face of the imaginary construct different. In the case of Brazilian citizens, sorry, uh, sorry, in the case of Brazilian society, it is noticeable that the country is organized based on a slave owning and racist logic. It is noted, therefore, that African students live in the condition of foreigners since it is a type of immigrant who lives in conditions characterized by vulnerability. This does not necessarily occur with all immigrants, especially those from European countries. That is, not all immigrants living in a condition of foreigners. For this to happen, the immigrant must be in a condition of defenselessness and helplessness. The relation The relation of African students, students with, Brazilian par, with their Brazilian partners, partners goes beyond individual issues involving the general story of black people in, in Brazil and the pejorative imaginary about being African, which may explain the difficulty of insertion, invisibility and distancing of Brazilian students and scholars. Allied to these facts, we are, we, we Brazilians are incapable to perceive Africans as inserted in the international circulation of studies, of students, uh, but through the path of charity. Thus, the African student as a temporary immigrant is presented as someone dominated and submissive to discrimination, unable to contribute to the construction of interculturality with Brazilian counterparts. As refugees, Africans are left with visas, with visas granted without the guarantee of a network of protection and social rights that are mandatory for a country like Brazil that has ratified the Geneva Convention. As students, young Africans must conform to the condescension of the Brazilian educational institutions. Both must stand up to a state incapable of producing effective public policies to control racial hatred, a media sociedad, uh, a social environment in which the argument of reverse racism, racism returns. The same society that blames young people like Moise for the violence they suffer. Sergio Camargo, former president of the Palmares Cultural Foundation, 
said that, and I quote, Moise, Moise used to walk and negotiate with people who are no good. In theory, he was a bum killed by stronger bums. Skin color had nothing to do with the brutal, the brutal murder. The undignified way of life and the, uh, and the context of savagery in which he lived and transited were decisive. And the end of quote. Uh, to finish, uh, black people, whether Brazilians, Afro-Latinos or Africans, always die twice. After physical death comes moral death, as we say, as we can say from, as we, we can see from Sergio Camargo words. Moise, unfortunately, only escaped the second. Well, uh, I hope I made myself uh, understandable for you. And now I'm open to, to any questions you, you need to, to make. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Vargas, for your very powerful reflections on the conditions of uh, immigration of Africans to Brazil in these con contemporary times. This presentation was fascinating in light of all of the kind of um, global immigration questions that have risen to public discourse at this moment. So I would like to invite our students and also um, our, our guests at large to ask any questions of Professor Vargas and uh, we'll just open up the floor. So feel free to raise your hand or drop a question in the chat. Well, I, I will step in and ask the question. Um, you've given a lot of information that I think is new and folks are just absorbing it because of the kind of image of Brazil in terms of immigration, inviting, you mentioned the kind of hospitality that is often linked to what folks think about when um, they think of Brazil. So if you could please speak a little bit about um, what inspired your initial project um, and the, the kind of waves of, of migrants that um, folks have seen, as you said, internally through the region of Latin America, um, particularly Haitian migrants, um, and also um, uh, migrants from continental Africa as well. So what inspired this project? What observations had, had you um, made that, um, that initiated these kinds of questions that you asked? Okay. Okay, well, I think that my my presentation was a little bit short, so uh, uh, sometimes it's difficult to organize the the ideas to to prepare to formulate questions. Um, well, initially, uh, my my first my first research topic was the Brazilian educational cooperation with uh, um, Africa. Portuguese speaking countries. Uh, Brazil has uh, a, a, huge, a huge educational uh, program uh, to receive African, stu uh, African students uh, to, uh, to make their under, undergraduate and graduate courses uh, in Brazilian universities. Uh, but I worked with the, uh, these, these kind of students for two years during my, my undergraduate course. And that time I, was, I felt a little difficult to understand uh, how, they, how they come to, uh, to, Brazilian, to Brazilian universities. And it was a little hard to, to understand uh, and a little hard to feel as well. Uh, the way they were treated in the Brazilian universities, because uh, 
Brazilian, my university uh, in particular, uh, used to treat these students as they were offering, as the university were offering uh, a, a, a kind of special service for these students uh, for, uh, from this, this cooperation program. Um, and as they, as they were doing more than these students actually deserve to receive. And then I decided to, to continue uh, to, to, to uh, research on this, on this topic on my, uh, on my doctorate project. Uh, but while doing this, this research, I, I realized that the problem of the of this cooperation program, uh, actually, the problem has a few a few pr construction problems uh, itself, but these this, uh, uh, internal problems are a reflection of the way uh, Brazilian governance and Brazilian uh, Brazilian political decisors. Uh, conceive the African, the, the Brazilian policy for the African continent. And the Brazilian poli politic for the African continent is linked with the way uh, the Brazilian society and Brazilian government deal with their own black people. Uh, Brazilian foreign policy to, Af to, policy to Africa uh, is filled with the same racist uh, conceptions that we have uh, uh, in our day-to-day -day life here in Brazil, but they are not uh, declared uh, in, the, in the political construction. And Brazilian educational cooperation uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in their working in, uh, uh, in, into the Brazilian universities and into the way uh, Brazilian government uh, negotiates the, the program with the receiving countries is also marked with the same uh, with the same problem with the same um, the same racism the same the the same uh, I, I I need I need a verb here that I'm I'm going to remember just the same hidden the same hidden racism that we have in the in our day to day life here, uh, and this is uh, is difficult to uh, to demonstrate this uh, in uh, in the terms that the international relations theory uh, analyzes the, the the construction and the operation of foreign policy. So uh, uh, this is the 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 big uh, the big the bigger uh, challenge of my of my thesis is to demonstrate doing uh, uh, through the the functioning of the uh, process of formation of our professional. Uh, professional operators of our foreign policy uh, and through the, the construction of the uh, Brazilian relations with, uh, with African countries that uh, foreign policy as a public policy is also, uh, is also linked and marked with uh, or racist relations in, in, in Brazil. Fascinating, fascinating take once again, um, in that this uncovers some of the myths around international relations and foreign policy that suggests that it's ultimately neutral. It's just country to country relations, peer to peer relations, but something it is that you're showing here is that there are foundational racist conceptions of that completely evade these ideas of, of equality that some people hearken to in that a student asked about um, the Geneva Convention. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about 
some of the policies that you indicate in, in your talk that help to shape these relations uh, that are uh, decidedly and um, openly described as cooperative, but seem to be anything but. So how is it that conventions like these um, actually work to undermine the cooperative nature between countries um, that are uh, seeking that kind of cooperation with Brazil from continental Africa and other parts of Latin America? Okay. Okay, well, uh, is some Samuel, uh, well, uh, answering your question, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not particularly uh, specialized in this, uh, in this part of uh, the legal, uh, the legal structure for the, the, the reception of migrants. But in, in Brazil, as uh, other countries uh, that uh, signed the same the same conventions uh, to receive refugees, uh, the country must have a, a, a structure of protection uh, to uh, to insert these these migrants into uh, the the labor uh, the labor market uh, into the educational system and to provide uh some uh some ele uh, it's not elementary it's, it's portuguese but e elementary no it's not the basic conditions basic basic, basic living conditions uh for uh, any migrant uh in uh covered by the the refugee statute the problem is Brazil have has granted visas for for refugees, uh, particularly from Congo, Venezuela, and Haiti, uh, the the three bigger uh, the three biggest uh, contingents of uh, of uh, groups of uh, refugees that Brazil received in the last uh, in the last five five years, uh, without creating this structure uh, to protect the, the, the refugees. So when they come to Brazil, they are uh, completely vulnerable uh, to the exploration of, of the work. So uh, the underemployment is, uh, is everywhere to, the, to, this, uh, to this, uh, these refugees. Uh, they are vulnerable, especially vulnerable to violence, uh, to xenophobic violence, despite the fact that Brazil projects uh, this, this image of, uh, of uh, a fraternal country. But uh, black migrants uh, have their, uh, they know that uh, this is not their, their, their experience. Uh, and this was particularly particularly uh, uh, evident during the um, during the World Cup in in Rio de Janeiro, uh, when people was was more Brazilian people and Brazilian uh, uh, municipal gov local governments uh, were more than uh, than happy to receive. Uh, Argentinians and North Americans and uh, European and even uh, Asiatic tourists for the for the World Cup, but the only the only group that had uh, uh, problems with the uh, with local 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 governments and with the police were tourists tourists from uh, African countries. Uh, or some that came came to Brazil as uh, as migrants or refugees uh, in the same in the same period. So the problem is uh, Brazil the, uh, doesn't doesn't make investments uh, doesn't invest enough to create a protection structure to to migrants, and they they can some of them can come to Brazil because uh, the, there's the, the case of Brazil have received um, 
more than more than two thousand uh, two thousand applications for refugee uh, for refugee status from Angola the Angolan candidates and more than ninety percent of them were were rejected. Uh, so when Brazil accepts the, this, this immigration, they must come by on their own, on their own risk, let's, let's say like that. Uh, but a lot of them are even rejected by Brazilian, Brazilian government. Uh, comparing to other, to other countries, to, to other countries in the same situation of Brazil, or and with, uh, and with uh, a, a similar a similar uh, geographic situation as as uh, as Brazil uh, as said with space geographical space Brazil have uh, has a, a very a very low number of of uh, refugees uh, actually Brazil in in 2021 Brazil had uh, had around uh, 50 uh, 50, 57,000 uh, refugees uh, in the country, in the country as uh, with Brazilian proportion. So it, it's a, a kind of, uh, it's, it's a political position, no, uh, receiving only uh, the, the less refugees, uh, migrants as possible. Yes, and just as a reminder, Brazil's population size is about 200 million. Um, so if that gives you an idea of the proportions of refugees that are welcomed into the country um, through, through these programs. Uh, John asks here, could you kindly elaborate more on the moral death that the Black community in Brazil are subjugated to? So what is it that you mean by that? Yes. Uh... I quoted in the end of my of my presentation. I quoted um, a post. It was a Twitter post made by Sergio Camargo. Uh, well, Sergio Camargo, uh, it's it's out of the the Bolsonaro government now. Uh, but until until last week, he was president of the the Palmares uh, Cultural Foundation. Palmares Cultural Foundation is uh, uh, it's a, a foundation created uh, in the in the end of the in the late uh, nineteen eighties uh, to promote black black culture and preserve the black history in in, in Brazil. Uh, Sergio Camargo uh, is a man, a conservative black man. Uh, supporter of uh, President President Bolsonaro, uh, that used this position uh, uh, at uh, Palmares Foundation to attack the whole uh, the whole initiatives uh, and the whole agenda of the um, uh, the black organizations here in Brazil. When uh, Moise was was assassinated, uh, he made this post. In in, uh, in his personal account of Twitter, uh, saying that Moise was was assassinated because he uh, he lived uh, around criminals and he was uh, it, it himself was a criminal uh, and so the, this 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 talk from from Sergio Camargo uh, was not isolated. Uh, when the when the Brazilian press began the the the, the cover of of the case, they uh, they said that Moise was drunk. They said that Moise uh, uh, suppose, supposedly abandoned abandoned his work. And this uh, this situation was just one example of the kind of uh, the manner that Brazilian that Brazilian press and some of our political leaders uh, treat or analyze uh, the violence that 
uh, black people suffer in Brazil. Even, uh, even women, uh, vi uh, violated women are, uh, consider are, are considered responsible by the violence uh, 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 they, they suffer because they didn't dress uh, in the correct way or because he didn't, uh, she didn't act in the, in the correct way. Uh, in, in other words, in, in other words, this, this, uh, this moral debt that I mentioned is this, uh, um, is the operation uh, made by the press, by some, uh, some of our conservative, uh, con conservative leaders, uh, leaders uh, to make black people always accountable for the, the violence they receive from society. I hope, uh, I, hope I answered, <laughs> I answered your, your question. Well done, well done. And we have another question about, you mentioned protections earlier and the kind of basic expectations that a refugee um, candidate and a refugee to a country could expect. Um, so Alexi asks here, what actions, if any, have the citizens of Brazil taken to protect African immigrants? Is there any organizing on their part? And also a secondary question, is there any support from the government for students like, well, DACA? Um, so in the United States, DACA is a separate kind of um, question, but let's take the first one. Um, so what have Brazilian citizens done to protect African immigrants? Is there any organizing around that? Well, um, most, most of the action we have uh, in the civil society in, in Brazil to support, uh, to support immigrants uh, are from uh, or NGOs uh, dedicated to, to support and uh, or to support in uh, in a very uh, large uh, la in different ways. Uh, some some NGOs are dedicated to help uh, immigrants to find uh, to find works. Uh, some NGOs are dedicated to to teach Portuguese to these to these migrants. Um, some of them. Uh, are dedicated to to help these migrants to find um, to find households, uh, but uh, most of these uh, of this action is not support supported directly directly for the government for uh, for, uh, for the Brazilian government. Um, some of some uh, some of these NGOs uh, keep their 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 work going. Uh, with uh, private, uh, private, no, just, just a minute, just checking. Um, yes, uh, with private financing um, or some, some uh, resources. Uh, from local governments, like the the state, the state, uh, some state governments like São Paulo have uh, finance. They they use to finance uh, NGOs that uh, work with these 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 migrants. Uh, well, I I don't know uh, I don't know exactly the meaning of this this problem this program DACA, but about. Uh, about uh, African stu students in Brazil, the, the most important uh, supporting program that Brazilian government uh, has is a, a program named Promise, Promisais. Uh, I don't know if there's a, 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 an official translation of this, of this, no, this name in, in English, uh, but Promisais, it stands for Programa Milton Santos de Assistência Estudantil. Uh, Promissais uh, is a financing given uh, in an annual basis for uh, students uh, inscribed into the Brazilian cooperation program, programs, uh, educational cooperation programs uh, with uh, 
Portuguese speaking countries and uh, in Africa and uh, developing countries uh, from other continents that are part of the same of, of the same program. Um, Promissize was, uh, was started in 2000, 2015 before the, 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 the beginning of the Promissize program. Uh, the students must, the, the foreign students, and just, just to, to clarify, not all foreign students in Brazil can apply to this, uh, to this kind of support. Just Africans and uh, students from uh, developing countries that are part of the Brazilian, Brazilian educational cooperation programs. Um, but before the beginning of Promissize, uh, students should uh, have had to apply into their own universities to try uh, to get some some support to uh, to pay rent to pay transport transport or or housing um, and the, the the problem was that uh, the Brazilian cooperation program, it stated that African students, African and other and other developing countries, uh, students in Brazil should prove before before to, before coming to Brazil, they should prove that they have uh, financial conditions conditions to keep themselves in the country. So what uh, what the uni Brazilian universities used to do, they used to put the African st students in the end of the line in the distribution of the, the supporting. Uh, and if possible, they would receive some, uh, some support. Uh, but the Brazilian, Brazilian universities doesn't feel uh, responsible uh, to support the, these, the, these students that are uh, uh, almost totally uh, uh, vulnerable, economic, and economically vulnerable uh, in Brazil. Just uh, after 2000, 2013, when President, uh, former President Dilma Rousseff, uh, changed the legislation, the legislation around um, the Brazilian educational cooperation program, that African students were were put into uh, equality with Brazilian Brazilian students. So they they. Uh, they the the new the new law is is stated that they had the same this uh, this cooperation uh, the this cooperation students uh, should have the same the same rights from the Brazilian students so the it, they they couldn't be uh, discriminated into the Brazilian universities uh, in the um, when applying for for supporting student support programs. Fascinating, fascinating. Again, um, all very, very, um, this is all new information uh, to me. Um, and I think that your perspective, not only as a scholar of foreign policy and international relations, your experiences having lived in other parts of the world also, I think, um, from our conversations has informed your views on immigration and with African migrants in particular. So I had the pleasure of visiting Portugal with um, Professor Vargas. And at the time she was at a university in Lisbon and she was explaining to me about the situation that, um, that distinguished African migration to Europe. And although, you know, similarly, um, there's a kind of uh, notion about the openness of Europe that continues to permeate public dialogue. So if we could talk about um, African migration uh, to Europe, what you, what you saw, what you observed within the university, outside of the university, just to give us a little bit of context around that, um, that would be helpful in, in thinking through these sort of global relationships. Well, uh, during my time, during my time in in Portugal, uh, 
I I have the the pleasure to to make make friendship with a lot of uh, of African students for from different parts of of the continent living the continent living in in Portugal. Um, and what what uh, what it's it's uh, it's visible in in Portugal is uh, that the country uh, Portugal as France as England um, and other other countries that have this this kind of uh, this colonial past uh, have they still have a feeling uh, that they are in some way. Uh, uh, responsible to lead uh, people uh, from from their former colonies. Uh, so in Portugal, uh, you can find you can find a, find a huge group of just just talking uh, just speaking uh, about the the young population, the young uh, uh, African descendant uh, descendant population in, in Portugal. But you can find a huge group of uh, black people uh, born around the, the 19, 1980s that uh, born in Portugal they, uh, as, as descendants of African migrants that went to, to, to Portugal uh, in the 70s and in the 60s during the, the time of the, the independence wars. But the, and these people born in Portugal and lived their whole life in, in Europe. Some of them never had the opportunity to visit the country of their fathers, Angola or Guinea-Bissau or Cabo Verde uh, or Mozambique uh, in Africa. But in Portugal, they are not uh, acknowledged as Portuguese. They are, they are seen and they are, uh, and the, their legal status is of Africans. They are foreigners in their own country. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a, 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 a big problem because as foreigners in, in Portugal, they don't have the same rights as Portuguese that uh, Portuguese people have. Some of these, some of these people uh, have the obligation uh, to renew their, uh, their visa to stay in Portugal, to stay in the country that we were born. So this is uh, this, uh, uh, a, very, uh, a very confusion situation for, uh, for someone uh, like for someone born in, in Brazil or in United States uh, where people uh, receive the the nationality uh, of by the by the soil uh, of the country, not from their their uh, their ancestor, uh, their fathers, not depending on the nationality of their fathers. Um, and in the same uh, at the same time, in this if if in the same time they have in Portugal this uh, this legal. Not this legal break between uh, African descendants, descendants born in, uh, in Portugal, uh, they have a lot of students or uh, working uh, or economic migrants from Europe uh, come, that, uh, come to the country uh, for, to work or to, to study. And uh, Port, uh, Portuguese institutions uh, try to to classify these 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 people uh, according to to uh, to the kind of of uh, not the kind of visa because this is uh, uh, this is a, a part of the the legal uh, the legal structure but. Uh, according to the, the purpose of their staying in Portugal. So when I, when I first come to, to Portugal, people, I, I always talk to people and they, they used to ask me what I, what, why, what I was doing 
in the country. So when I started, when I explained that I was doing my, my, my PhD thesis, they started to treat me differently. So people say, used to say to me, oh, so uh, you're, a, you're a different kind of immigrant. What the meaning of this? Uh, saying that you are a different kind of immigrant uh, is like saying that you are not here as an uh, economic migrant. You are not here uh, looking for a job. So in four or five years, you are leaving the country back to your, to your, own, to your own place. Uh, so there's always that, that, uh, that, that feeling that people are hoping for you to say that sometime you are finally leaving their country and so they will be they will be free from uh from all not not just from humans but uh from all black uh migrants uh in the country uh so there there's this this contradiction uh for uh, african migrants in portugal uh work as uh as black people here in Brazil, they they have uh, they do most of the of the jobs, uh, the 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 low payment jobs. Uh, more uh, we black women in uh, black uh, African migrants in Portugal, for example, uh, used to work in the uh, in the commerce. Uh, like in uh, in in commerce like McDonald's and the this kind of of uh, fast food places, um, they are most of the cleaning workers, uh, especially women, especially black uh, African women, are most of the 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 workers in the in the cleaning services. Um, they are uh, most of the workers in construction. So they are uh, for the for the the the, the Portuguese economy. Uh, African migrants are really necessary, but at the same time, the Portuguese society rejects these these migrants in the same way that Brazilian uh, society rejects uh, African uh, African migrants even uh, refugees or students here in, in, in Brazil. Thank you. Thank you so much for those reflections. Um, Layla mentions here, it's, uh, it's wild how that applies to the United States as well. Many of the observations that you're making, the students are making connections um, in that. Actually, uh, this past week, we watched a film on Dominican-Haitian relations and immigration to the Dominican Republic. So um, just as a reminder to all here, in 2013, the Dominican Republic Supreme Court strip citizenship of anyone with Haitian parents. So similar to what it is that you're mentioning here, African migrants who were born in Portugal, who um, at least to the kind of uh, legal frameworks that we have here in the United States, which are observed in Brazil, if you are born in a country, then that is the place of your nationality and your citizenship. But the idea that citizenship could be revoked or that citizenship is still not a, a firm um, kind of category, politically and with uh, the kind of foreign policy that exists, it's um, actually, uh, it, it's shocking, it's startling, but um, it, it's not without precedent. And so when we think about these kinds of questions around immigration, um, especially as we're having, we're seeing the kind of shockwaves of COVID-19 and how um, economic migrants, how migrants in terms of conflict are being um, received or where it is they're headed. Um, we still can keep these questions in mind. We can still talk about, especially with the course that many students here are representing, um, it is a, a course on Black diasporas. And much of diaspora is talking about movement and movement across borders. What are the freedoms with which um, Black communities and African people are able to move about the world, um, what kind of restrictions are in place? How is it that citizenship can be this sort of contestable status when 
in, in the minds of, of many, it's just kind of like, you know, your nationality is a firm and fixed identity. Um, and we're seeing more and more with people moving um, in search of better lives, in search of job opportunities, being forced to migrate to other parts of the world. These larger questions around um, racism and anti-Black racism uh, still exist and still will large. Um, there are some others that are commenting here in the chat. Thank you so much for this important talk. Um, and it leaves a lot of people without identity, um, as one said. But could we also talk to or speak to um, just in the few minutes that uh, remain here? So we will go until 1230. This is just a time check. Some of my students have to leave at 1215, but we'll continue talking. Could you speak about how it is that um, that communities are, are being formed uh, in in Brazil, despite the kind of pushback. So I remember um, one of my last times in Brazil in Sao Paulo, I saw, you know, thriving um, restaurants and folks really welcoming uh, their, their experiences in, in Brazil and were able to share and exchange culture through different kinds of cultural organizations. So these are also some elements of, of what's going on. So if you could speak to that, um, that would be helpful in giving us a, a full context too. Okay, uh, well, here in, here in João Pessoa, unfortunately, unfortunately um, despite we have, uh, we have a, a, a well, not, we, we have a, 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 an important uh, number of, uh, an, an important group of uh, African students here uh, in the university, but uh, we still we we wasn't able yet to uh, to con to build uh, a relationship with this with this group uh, in order to promote a, a, an integration of these the these students here uh, in the city. Uh, well, but here uh, we have groups of the the we have groups of students. Uh, linked uh, firstly by the uh, their nationality so we have groups of students from Guinea-Bissau, uh, Angola, uh, Cape Verde uh, and they uh, before before the 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 this this covid uh, pandemic uh, they used to uh, to promote uh, at uh, once a year a kind of festival that was uh, used to be the moment uh, when they all these groups the of of African students could uh, get together and to uh, to meet each other uh, and promote some activities and talks uh, and parties uh, uh, inspired on their on their own cultures and here i'm i'm using uh i use most of times the 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 reference to the their nationality but uh inside this the these groups uh there are uh other divisions uh depending on the ethnic group uh, uh with the uh, fr uh, from which uh individual comes uh, but uh, what what we can observe is that these ethnic differences that maybe in their own country can be most uh, most uh, uh, more can be more important here uh, these ethnic divides uh, must must uh, give space uh, to another kind of, of bonding they need to to produce to survive uh, in São Paulo, uh, we have a much larger number of, of uh, African, African students uh, than here in, in João Pessoa. And more than, than students, we have uh, a bigger community of migrants in, in, in São Paulo, in, in cities like São Paulo, in Rio de Janeiro, in Salvador. Uh, that we don't have here uh, in, in João Pessoa. Uh, people working uh, in commerce, people uh, that uh, started, started some, uh, some business, uh, 
uh, especially restaurants, African restaurants in, 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 in Sao Paulo. Uh, and here in, in, in Paraíba, we, don't, we, we are not at this point yet because uh, we, have not, we, not, we have not only um, a smaller population, but our econom the economic space of, of uh, Paraíba and João Pessoa uh, are less attractive to these migrants that need to, uh, um, to invest to, well, in, in, in Brazil, there's a, a, there's a word that uh, are much in, uh, much famous, but I don't know if uh, the word exists in English, let me check. Uh, well, some, uh, uh, Paraíba, the, the João Pessoa economic, economic situation is less attractive to those African migrants that wants to, to, to act as entrepreneurs. So they, uh, they look more commonly uh, for bigger cities like uh, São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Salvador, or even Fortaleza, that uh, it's two states at uh, north of north, uh, north of Paraíba here in, in, in Brazil uh, that have are, are more are, are economic more uh, economically more attractive and these uh, these communities uh, they involve not only this uh, this uh, these groups groups of uh, African entrepreneurs and their families. Uh, but most of these of these students groups that that come to Brazil and they uh, uh, try to 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 bond with these these communities for protection and for for support. Uh, but they uh, uh, they uh, actually include uh, even groups of of uh, migrants that. Uh, I, I don't like I don't like to use the term the term illegal illegal aliens like the like the Donald Trump used to to say United States but uh, we have uh, we we have uh, an an unknown number of um, of uh, illegal immigrants in, in Can we Brazil. say Not undocumented? Legal, yes, undocumented. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jaira. Undocumented uh, uh, migrants, African migrants in Brazil, especially from Angola, and they, uh, uh, they, uh, despite the fact that some of them uh, uh, are undocumented, it doesn't mean that they are involved in illegal practices. Most of them are looking are here in Brazil, looking for jobs, looking for. Uh, some some kind of work they 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 can do, uh, but they don't have uh, they are not accepted they are they are not accepted as um, refugees by the Brazilian country uh, because they don't they don't uh, Brazilian country Brazilian government uh, wants that people prove that er, that they are in danger they, uh, uh, in their in their own country to recognize the refugee status for for a, a foreigner uh, if the uh, so if someone can make this 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 point to the brazilian brazilian government the only way they have to to come to brazil is as an uh, in an undocumented uh, migrant uh, because the, someone applying for a refugee status is not someone that can be can apply for uh, a student or uh, a working uh, a worker uh, visa here here in Brazil. So uh, the this uh, we we have we have a a a, a net uh, uh, of of relations. Uh, we in this in these African African communities here in Brazil, and we have 
uh, actually we have to to look down to look more closely to this to these communities uh, to understand what the what are the kind of problems that they they their faces and they they are facing and to develop the um, uh, policies political policies that public policies uh, that can uh, produce the a, a real integration of this community into the Brazilian society, but the pro the problem is Brazilian government don't uh, don't 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 have a real a real will to integrate even uh, their own black population into into the society, uh, and so African are even more. Uh, uh, vulnerable in this in this point. Yeah, thank you, Professor Vargas. Um, a comment here is that uh, I honestly, in a way, understand this whole thing about being undocumented. It is really sad to think that someone needs to prove themselves to prove their existence. Yes. Um, so that that's uh, that's one comment that we have. Let's see if we have any other questions. Um, any other reflections on what it is that you've heard? Anyone learn anything new today? Like to share? And while we wait, since there's about 10 minutes left, Maybe you could speak to your um, your teaching in international relations. So, you know, um, you study this, you worked on it. How much of this conversation around um, racism, black populations, is that a very common thing to hear? What what it is that we're discussing right now? Well, um, I I teach. I teach international relations since 19, uh, 2007. And since I come to, to, to Paraíba, to, to João Pessoa, uh, I started to teach uh, international relations history and uh, Africa regional, Oh, I, I forgot the name, the name of the, the, the discipline. Um, regional studies, African regional studies. Uh, and I was very, I, I, I feel, I, I always felt bad because uh, the way our, our, our course was, was built here was so, so Eurocentric and uh, uh, this was uncomfortable. Uh, and then I started that 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 was uh, why I decided to to pursue my my PhD on African studies. Uh, because I have uh, I, I had this this need to uh, to learn to learn more about about Africa and to uh, and to discuss uh, how Africa is uh, is seen as part of this of this international uh, system or this international society or this international um, scenario, uh, depending on the on the theory you want to you want to use. Um, and then uh, this uh, uh, this decision. Uh, Actually, have uh, have a few a few a few costs, but it made me capable to uh, to produce uh, to produce a different a different kind of of reflection on firstly on how uh, the African continent is is seen in the international relations theory and how uh, most of or international analysts see Africa as uh, a minor partner in the in the international international uh, contests uh, and then we this we uh, we started 
to develop some local projects uh, to discuss the this this uh, this uh, this question it, not only on my disciplines but in the whole disciplines of the of the course and to provide to to students a view on how this uh, this uh, this look this situation this African situation in the in the international international context is a, a product it's a result uh, of the way uh, the international relations uh, theories uh, uh, the the especially uh, those ones that that make the the mainstream of the of the area uh, were built on uh, were built on on supremacist premises uh, and white supremacist premises uh, it's to <laughs> to complete the the phrase um, and we try to 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 demonstrate to them how uh, this philosophic uh, uh, white supremacist uh, uh, premises uh, were introduced in the into or modern uh, theory or classic theories like realism and uh, uh, liberalism um, in a way that uh, it's not necessary to say that Africa is uh, is not important in the international international system uh, because the this is this is like um, it, this uh, became itself a premise on our on our theories, uh, and this must must be must be seen must be confronted in our uh, in the way we we analyze the international relations, and not just in the African in the African case. Because I, I always say uh, talk about Africa because this is uh, the the. The, uh, it's my it's my uh, area of, of interest but it can say about the same can be uh, the same can be said about America Latina uh, Latin America the most the, the same can be said about Asia um, because uh, the origin of this these constructions, is the process of colonization. So we have to, uh, uh, to get really into the, the, the study of, this, of this, this experience. And I, uh, I analyze this historically, but uh, it, can be, uh, it can be done in other, in other areas as well uh, to, uh, uh, to uncover this uh, these hierarchical relations between uh, north and south, uh, north uh, north countries and south and south countries, uh, and black people and wh uh, white people and non-white people, including blacks, indigenous peoples, Asians, and what else? Fantastic, fantastic. Well, um, we are out of time and I'd like to thank you so much for your presentation and your comments today. This is our last installment of the Black and Latin America series um, and we do appreciate your time. We appreciate your expertise and your knowledge to give us some light on what the, the wide spectrum of what it means to be Black in Latin America. And we certainly uh, appreciate what it is we've offered today. Um, and to close, actually, um, one of my students, Sky, said, I think this conversation really shed some light on immigration for members of the Black diaspora anywhere. And we thank you for this enlightening presentation. So um, that's all we have. Well, Jaira, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all students for their, their comments and their questions. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to, uh, to clarify some of the, the ideas I, I exposed. And 
uh, I feel really, really happy to happy to have the the opportunity to talk to to you here today. Thank you. And 